All right, welcome to another episode of Punch Me in the Face. Thank you very much for getting on. We're going to talk today about a few things that you can use to your benefit when the economy's down and what's happening when companies lose or let's say an Amazon cuts 19,000 jobs, whatever these guys are doing. You understand they still keep doing everything. What I mean by that is there's a lot of quiet hiring and firing going on. There's employees that are quiet quitting. They're at a job. They don't love it. They're doing a lot less. They haven't officially quit but they kind of quiet quit it. Now, what does that mean for you? All right, if they're, if you had a bunch of quiet quitters around you, what if you're at your job and you want to do better? That was me, I'm like, I got my job. Every time I got a job, I want to know what my next promotion would be, even if it wasn't right away. Every time I got my job, when I was unloading packages at UPS, I was like, what's my next promotion? Like you're at your job and you're in a down economy. So your opportunity to grow is huge right now. because people are quiet quitting all over the place. And what I mean by that is they're in a place where they're just not doing as much. And then there's quiet firing, right? Where people are like, just like quiet hiring. So there, and what I mean by that is there's people that are laying people off. So let's say Amazon lays off 19,000 people, gets rid of them. Dude, they're really asking the people there to do more. So it's kind of a quiet hiring, but they're just saying like, Basically, you're going to do more without us saying anything. We're just like, hey, Tom, and now we need you to handle this. We don't go, hey, guys, let 19,000 people go. We're still going to do all the exact same shit we're doing with them, which means a lot of you are going to work a lot harder than you were. Now, you have your job. You see things are, people are being downsized. You see, this is opportunity. You didn't ask for people to be laid off. You didn't ask for the economy to do this, but you want to make sure you're an asset to the company. You go, well, I want to have my own company. What? Screw the company. Hey, dude, it's where you work right now. I didn't think I was going to retire from McDonald's. I didn't think I was going to retire from UPS. Great companies. No problem. Didn't think I was going to retire from there. I didn't think I was going to retire from the state of Connecticut as a social worker. Never. I didn't think I was going to retire from all the jobs I had. I never thought I was going to retire from there. But they were the jobs I had at the time. So I worked really, really hard to do really, really well there. Because I wanted to be an asset. And in 08, when the economy was down... For a lot of you that remember that in 2008, a lot of you are like, what the hell are you talking about? I don't even know what, what was happening then. I was just born. Um, well, you're older than that, but I was, you know, I was young. I was in middle school. I was in high school. What I did is I was like, okay, how do I become more valuable to my employer? That is not a bad thing. Anybody that somehow thinks that you working hard to be a better employee when you have a job and thinks that you're like kissing ass or selling out. Dude, you, you, it's what you do to make a living right now. Could you make more money there? Can you get promoted? Can you have a better opportunity? I don't know, but while you're working there, why not give it your best? And the reality is don't burn bridges. A lot of the people that were my employers and they were my peers, when I went into business for myself, they became my clients. But I, they knew me as a hard worker. They knew me as a productive person. They knew me as somebody that moved the needle that did stuff. So in today's economy, now, if you go, were you working one, if you're working on those jobs, Sean, would you take on additional duties? Yes. Now you have two choices. You can go, you know what? This bullshit. I have to do more stuff and I'm not going to do it. Okay. Dude, if I can do it in my 40 hours a week, it means I work a little harder at work and get my hour lunch break. I don't really need an hour to eat. I like working. And then I can make myself more valuable to the company, to my, to my boss while I'm here knowing I won't be here forever, why would I not do that? I ain't going to quiet quit on you. If I'm going to quit, I quit. I go like, hey, I'm out. I quit. And this quiet hiring is like, hey, these guys left. We're really going to ask you to do more. And you have a choice. You can go, I'm not doing it. That's not fair. All right. I didn't do that. I never understood that concept. That's why I struggled with unions. I never, I didn't, I had one at the state. I had one at UPS. I didn't understand either of them. And what I mean by that is I understood a long time ago why they were there to protect everybody, but I never understood why it became such an entitlement where I worked. And people say stuff like, well, I don't have to do that. I'm like, no, it's your job. No, it's not. I, I, um, you know, I, it's two minutes out of my area. Or I'm like, dude, we protect children. Don't worry about your freaking union book. These are kids' lives. UPS, well, I did this and it's this. And I know I have his package, but that's, you know, 45 minutes, 45, you know, seconds out of my way. Or I can't pick that up by myself. Or I can't, they'd be like, can't pick the 150-pound package up by yourself. I'm like, why? I could pick a hundred, like, I could pick a 400-pound package up, like 150-pound package. Yeah, you need assistance with those. And I was like, 
I think it was even like 75 pounds. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? Well, you can't. It's a violation. Me picking that up is a... Dude, I understand if I'm weak and not in terrible shape, I wouldn't... And I don't want a guy to fall to the ground and can't pick it up. But I can pick that up, no freaking problem. Why would I stare at it for an hour until some dude comes over and helps me? Or I deliver the package and I can't deliver it to the guy's house because nobody's in the truck with me? Come on, man. So I just didn't understand it. But you have to understand in today's world, you have to figure out how can you take advantage of the situation? How can you? And a lot of these things are happening. Now, me, if I was the employer, I wouldn't try to be like lay a bunch of people off and pretend. I'd, I'd lay them off if we had to and go, hey, guys, here's the deal. You know, it sucks. The economy's tough. We're going to do the best we can. We're going to make some cuts. We had, to, we, had to, we had to drop staff. You know, we're not happy about that part. Never wanted to. There are going to be some other them people are going to ask to be doing some additional things. We're going to figure out what we can and can't do. We're going to do the best we can, but I'm going to need the help from everybody. I'm here for you. I love you. I want to grow, but I'm letting you know part of this just straight sucks. But we, but it's the hand we're dealt. Like, it's the hand we got. What do you want to do? I don't want to perseverate about it for too long. It's the hand we've been dealt. So down economies create phenomenal opportunities for people that are workers because when it when you come out of it and you always do it allows you to really shine and also opportunity what you should also be thinking about as an employee is is there a better opportunity for me that's the weirdest thing for me every time i got a job i was like if fedex had called me when i was working at ups and said hey we know that you make x amount of dollars an hour for unloading trucks we're going to give you 50 percent more i would have quit that day and my good friend was my manager like he's a lot older than me but i liked him a lot we play ball together like I liked him. I would have still hung out with him, but I would have quit and went to FedEx. Had Burger King come into McDonald's and said, hey, I know you're 15. We'll pay you $3 more an hour. I'd be like, no purple hat. I'd have the brown hat. I'd be next door making Whoppers instead of Big Macs in a second. If the federal government came in when I was at the state and said, hey, you get this much more. You know, I was in the police academy, which I never really wanted to be a police officer. I just was never one of my, you know, I got arrested by a lot of police officers growing up. I didn't, it wasn't like, I respect the hell out of law enforcement, but it was never my goal. I didn't think I had the right temperament. I didn't think I'd be any good at it. And when I got hired and went through the police academy, yes, I, I was out of control, stupid, immature, over aggressive. So I understand why they were like, hey, yo, we don't like, we're, we're not going to keep you anymore. I mean, you did the police academy, you crushed it, but on the job, man, for this police department, you're like a little bit over the top, dude. We're going to pick somebody else. I kind of understood it, but I also knew I had a job with the state on the back end making 12 grand more an hour or, or 12, not an hour. That'd be great. 12 grand more a year, you know, and then put, like unlimited overtime. So I was like, dude, that's like huge for me. Like that was a big opportunity. So I already had that because I was always looking and I'm like, I don't have a gun. They're probably not going to shoot at me and I make more money and I work first shift, not second, which is probably would have worked there or third. So you should always be thinking that how can I get promoted? How can I move up? How can I move out? And it's, I think the people that get their situation and figure that's your, their lot in life and they're frustrated. I wasn't frustrated because I was always thinking, I wonder if there's another opportunity for me. And, and again, I'm loyal to supporting who I have to support. The employer's fine. I'm not mad at you, but like, dude, I'm loyal to what, that's why every business I was in, real estate, life insurance, waste management, I mean, anything I owned, I knew that. If the going rate for a driver was X, I knew I had to pay a little more. Because <laughs> I knew there'd be days that I'd be frustrated, they'd be frustrated, I might want to work a little bit more, I might not be right in my delivery. But they're like, you know what, Sean could be paying the ass, but we make more than we're gonna make anywhere else. Real estate, I was like, how do I get you to keep the most commission if you're gonna work with me? Because, dude, if somebody offers you 30% more to work with them over me, I'd kind of be like, all right, I mean, is it like, is there anything else I'm not aware of? No, everything else is the same, Sean. We'll take the money. What do you want me to tell you? Insurance is the same thing. Let's be really aggressive with what people make. I just think that, that that's law of large numbers. It gets massive. I remember talking to, listening to Arthur Blank talk in a meeting about Home Depot and how it was founded. There was a number of people involved in it. I don't know everybody's role and what, who did what, but I listened to him. He bought the Falcons, did a lot of flame through stuff. He's a great guy. I liked him. Met him a couple times. And he just said, he said, dude, I just understood the concept because I worked at a hardware store. I know what the chart, I know how much we marked everything up. And I knew that if we could go big box store, that would work. And a little bit of a lot would become a lot. So those concepts make sense to me. They're, they're not confusing at all. So I think that for us, we need to really start thinking about 
what does that look like, right? So in this world in 2023, what are you doing to get ahead? Because companies will fall. They will. The economy will definitely cause companies to fall. Companies that weren't well-positioned or maybe well-timed, but they will fall. They will fail. They will downsize. That's going to happen. The question you have to ask yourself is how will it affect you? Will it be positive or negative? I got my insurance license in 08. I already have my real estate license. My job I made more that year because I think with the economy down, it was just a lot of overtime and and people were, you know, I think as a social worker, finances make people frustrated. There was more calls. There was more stuff to do. And then, like, I got into insurance, and a lot of people around me were, were like, running for the hills as the economy was down. I was running out to go to work. Like, when COVID hit, I understood, you know, all these years later, if I just keep working and we're socially responsible, we're smart about what we do, a lot of people are going are gonna to pack it in. <laughs> economy goes down, you know? We, 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 we hit a massive, unbelievable speed bump in 22, right? And earlier, right? Like, and I was like, all right, how do we get better? Because what I understood, it, it was a thinning of the herd. And when the, th when the herd thins, you have a better opportunity. You should be looking around right now. Me, I go went to my employer in day. I was like, hey, listen, I know it's going to be hard right now. I know, but I want, you know, I'm here for you. I'm looking for more hours. Anything I can do to help. I know we had to cut some people, which we did. I know we're in a hiring freeze. We can't add. I'm willing to help. Now, I want to get paid for what I do. And if I work harder than all those other guys, I do want to get paid more. It doesn't have to be today. But as we move out of this thing, don't forget what I did. I'm always negotiating on my behalf, as you should be. There's nothing wrong with that. And those companies survive. Make it a great place to work and pay them well. You have to understand what people are looking for. But you have to figure out what side of that are you on. Well, I have my job. Okay, you're not quiet quitting because you're still working there, right? No, I'm doing my job. I'm cool. Okay, they're doing some quiet hiring. Are you participating in the hiring? Meaning they're not technically hiring people. They're asking you to do more. I think if you do more, that actually makes sense, right? Like, I think that makes sense. And a lot of people around you are going to do less. You know, we've talked a lot about how do you stand out? How can you differentiate yourself? How can you pull yourself away from the crowd? How can you look different? But what I ask you is, what are you going to do in this down economy? Will you take advantage of the situation? Will you thrive or will you die? And then will you blame the economy? I got out of real estate in 08, not just because of what the mortgage market did. I wasn't positioned right. I had a real estate company, construction company, the land development. We did well. We weren't, we didn't have the track record yet. We didn't have the infrastructure yet. I didn't have the right employees yet. So I got out knowing I was not ready. I had not positioned myself over the previous couple of years. I treated it as a very good independent contractor deal where I made money. I got too big right before the economy did what it did. You know, if I knew more about mortgage derivatives and what was going to happen with the market and how it would crash, I would have planned differently, right? I didn't know. Okay, got it. But I didn't blame the economy. I've never said once, yeah, this is 08, this is real estate I got out. No, I other dude, people thrived. The strong companies did really well. In down economic times, people fall. The ones that are that are well positioned have a good foundation, have a good business philosophy, and they're big, but they can adapt. That's what I always wanted. I want to be a good sized company, but be agile enough to move. And that's what you know you see today. As employees, you gotta be the same way. Are you agile enough to move? Can you make those moves? Are you thinking about what's next for you? Are you thinking about how you can negotiate? Are you thinking how you can position yourself? You need to be thinking about those things in a down economy. The, the opportunity is everywhere right now for you. As an employee, independent contractor, what you're going to do for your family? Make the most of it. And most people are going to tap out because they do that. They're quitters. You need to find a way to thrive. You need to negotiate for yourself. You need to watch the quiet hiring, the quiet quitting, the quiet firing, when they're kind of not really firing, but they're really, and they're, what they're doing to offset people and what they're doing it with, with certain positions and what they're talking about, what they can't pay and all the things that got to change. So people kind of, you know, are, 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 are fading out. You right now, don't be quiet, dude. Let all the quiet stuff go on. You scream from rooftops about what you're willing to do. You find the right people. You network. You look at other opportunities out there. If you're going to do one and a half time, if you're going to do the work of one and a half people, know it, leverage it, use it, negotiate for a better pay and better situation there or a better job outside of there. 
It's okay to do that. I never got in with the company and said, I'm going to be here forever no matter what. Never once. Now, if it was the best financial opportunity, and I would say to myself, you know what? If this remains the best financial opportunity and these people keep doing the stuff they're doing and stand behind it, I could see myself being here for a long time or for like as long as I, I, I work. But outside of that, dude, it better be that opportunity because keep your eyes open. This is a time to be agile, to negotiate, to understand your worth and make yourself more valuable. So comment, let me know your thoughts. I appreciate it. Take advantage of this economy. Don't, don't wither away and let it beat you down. You're in control. Like, subscribe, please share, jump on YouTube. Again, I always appreciate your time. I know it's very valuable.